you can make it. Um, some of the students this week have been having a little bit of um, trouble with with Google Hangouts with loading the classes. So um, I wanted to practice with you guys some idioms today. So um, do you guys all know what an idiom is? Yep, it's an expression that it's an an expression that uh, means that has some idiomatic meaning. Okay, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so it says one thing, but it means something else. The idiom. Yep. Um, so, so these are really widely understood in places um, like the United States. So, um, the idioms that we're going to practice today are all really. Um, American based, like they're all from the United States. I don't want to offend anybody by saying American, but <laughs> they're all from the United States. Um, so I put, oh, is that the place where Victor wrote something in the chat box? I don't know if he was talking to me though about Seville. Um, sorry, I have something in my eye. <laughs> Um, can you guys all see the link in the Verbling chat? Yep. Yeah. Okay, try yeah. to open yeah. that link for me, please. Done. Done. Okay. <laughs> Done. So, <laughs> okay, so um, we're going to maybe read this together, and then as we go along, I'm going to ask you guys for examples of how to use um, these different idioms in a sentence. So um, I think we might start with Fernando. Uh, he was the first one to the class. So Fernando, maybe you can read the little, um, well, you can read the first paragraph. Maybe I'll have each of you guys read a paragraph here. Uh, on the title? Okay. Uh, yeah, you can read the title. Ten very wrong sayings about animals. Uh, we learned these phrases as a kid and never give them a second thought. How? You are happy as a clam. He's a crazy as a loon. 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 She mm -hmm. eats like a bird. You know what they mean? They are very happy. She's a bit nutty. She doesn't eat much. But do you ever think of what you are actually saying and whether or not it's true? Are clams, are clams happy? Do loons have a skill loose? Do they speak at their food? Maybe, maybe not. Okay, maybe Michael, can you read the next paragraph, please? Okay. Some, uh, some animal things or idioms certainly are true. Take a fish out of water. For example, if you see a dance floor crowded with 20 somethings, how did this work? For 20 somethings, shimmying. Shimmying, what was that? Shimmying, it's like moving, like shimmying. <laughs> Can you show on the camera? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shaking, I know, so you don't have to show that. Shaking. Okay. And shaking to rock tunes. And then an elderly couple strolls into their midst and tries to wal waltz. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of dance. Waltz, yeah, is correct? Yeah, waltz. Uh, to the music. You might comment that uh, the two old folks are like fish out of water, meaning they are in a situation they are not suited to. Since fish would certainly be out of place on land, the saying is an apt one. Mm -hmm. an apt one. The saying is an apt one. That means it's it's well suited for the situation. Um, Ahmed. That uh, it's, yeah. Uh, so, so what's uh, me? And it, it says the saying is an apt one. That means it's well suited for the situation. But midst, midst. What? M I D S. -T. Oh, midst. Midst. Um. How do you pronounce? Midst. 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 <laughs> okay. okay, we had Akka come into the class too. Hi, Akka. Yes, hello, how are you? Hey, I'm good. How are you today? Yes, I'm fine, thank you. Good. Um, I think you know 
the mm -hmm. other students, Michael and Ahmed, have you met Fernando before? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Okay. This is the first time yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's nice to see you again. I'm glad that you're with us in class. So, um, I can give you also the link, um, Aka, for mm -hmm. this um Please, this uh, article that we're. Uh, I oh, can Google only chat. Okay, it. hold on just a second. I have to change. Oh, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. And your verbling chat is not working? Yes, these days I always uh, couldn't open uh, the Google uh, Bible chat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to ask all of the students then to just go ahead and switch to Google chat. And then all of us can write there, okay? Okay. Okay, thank you guys. Thank you all right, much. so, um, Aka, were you able to open this link? Yes. I have, I have opened. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, so um, Michael, you had a question about the word midst. Um, so yeah. the sentence says, an elderly couple strolls into their midst and tries to waltz to the music. So that um, into their midst is like saying into their presence or into the middle of the crowd. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. maybe... I could ask Ahmed to read the third paragraph here, where it says yeah. but other sayings. But but other sayings about animals are debatable. Debatable. Oh, yeah. Debatable. Does the early bird uh, get the word? The front bird species do arise at different times. In some of the earliest uh, risers certainly nosh on worms. However, so do the later risers, the early the early, the early risers can't gobble them all up. The most interesting sayings to to ponder, though, are the ones that are just plain false. Here are ten of them. Yeah. A lot of things that I don't know in that paragraph. <laughs> yeah. Okay, are there are there a lot of words that are unfamiliar there? Uh, yeah, a lot of words are unfamiliar. Yeah. No, you did a nice job reading. Um, can you let me know, like, which words are you unfamiliar with, so I can tell you their definitions? Uh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Debatable. Debatable. Um, well, a debate is when two people are discussing something or maybe arguing about something, when they have two different opinions. Um, so when something is debatable, that means that it's up for argument. Like, um, people could have two different opinions about, yeah, about these things. Okay. Uh, nosh, nosh on worms. Nush and gobble, these are both um, sort of like slang words for eat. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So they both mean eat, nosh and gobble. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, okay, well you did a really nice job reading. So we're going to go ahead and um, consider the first idiom here, number 10. Um, and maybe I could ask Aka. Aka, would you like to read number 10 for us? Number 10. Mm -hmm. uh, that means next. Yes. Okay, next. Okay. A blind as a bad. A bats aren't blind. They are not even a little uh, nearsighted. But they do have is ex exceptionally uh, acute uh, hearing. Uh, they also possess uh, sonor, sonar, so sophisticated. It tops that used by the U.S. military, uh, the sonar or echolocation ability, involves the bats producing uh, ultrasonic pulses or sounds, which then reflect off objects. The bats processes uh, the reflected sound to avoid obstacles to effectively hunt and to properly orient, orient themselves. Since the bats are nocturnal animals and have such amazing e e echolocation skills, 
their sense of sight isn't that important. Perhaps this is why uh, the myth about their business arose, a blindness arose. Blind. It also may have something to do with the fact that that the world's uh, only flying animals have Mammals. long been viewed by humans as both fascinating and repulsive. Uh, qualities that uh, have led to main, many myths about the creatures. Nice reading, very good. Um, so, I'd like you guys to try to use this expression, blind as a bat, in a sentence. So, I'm going to ask maybe Fernando first. I don't know where, where we are. Oh, no. Okay, um, on the page. Wait, I'll just I'll give you this the link to the page. This link. Um. Okay. Did you did you see this link here? Yes. Yes. I. In the Google chat. Uh, ah. Okay. I. 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 Okay. 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 So. Um, and the uh, this idiomatic expression "blind as a bat." No. Um, it tries. It's um, the significance is that someone has really, really bad eyesight. Um, so, can you try to use that in a sentence, Fernando? Would you like to try? Bats aren't blind. Okay. Oh no no. But he already, Aka already read it. But would you like to try to um, to use the idiom in a sentence? Blind as a bat. Blind as a bat. No, excuse me. Okay, it's okay, no problem. I'll give you a chance to read through that since you had like kind of lost your place, Michael. I'm gonna ask you, maybe you can try to use that expression in a sentence. Blind as a bat. When I when I saw first time. Teacher Michelle, I become I became blind as a bat. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Does it make any sense? Or no? Not yeah. So well, I'm um, to say that you're blind as a bat. It it um it <laughs> means that you have really bad eyesight. Okay. So basically, uh, that's uh, uh, I have uh, like really, or maybe I could say to someone that uh, so, uh, doesn't see something. For example, um, he. Uh, for example, he's searching for his keys or something, and he doesn't find. But they're in front of him. Can I say, "Hey, you are blind as a bat"? Yeah, you could you could use it in that situation, yeah. and it would be like a funny expression. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. In a humorous way, you could use yeah. it. So I use that in a humorous way when I said <laughs> that I became blind as a bat. When okay. Okay. Very nice. Good job. Um, so I wanted to ask um, Ahmed. Ahmed, is it true that that bats have really bad eyesight? Uh, no, I don't agree with that. The, uh, the bat, uh, yeah, he, he he don't have eyes, but he have an ecosystem that helps him to uh, uh, to see uh, what behind him. So. I would use uh, blind like a bat as a bat. Uh, for example, if someone in his home and he, he is not going out, uh, and I asked him for something new, uh, and he, uh, he 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 answered me right, I, I will tell him you, you are blind as a bat. <laughs> okay, so so like it it would be somebody that he wasn't able to see to leave his house. I didn't understand the example. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, my example is that uh, I just um, uh, understand that, that blind, like uh, as a bat, is, mm -hmm. is is when he knows something uh, without seeing it or without. Uh, without oh, seeing because it. they have because they have like echolocation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's cool. Well, um, with the expression, like the expression isn't really scientifically accurate, so it's not really correct the expression. Um, so that's what this this whole article is about. So even though the expression says that 
um, like blind as a bat, like they would maybe have really bad eyesight. In reality, do they have really bad eyesight? Maybe we could ask Akka. Akka, do they have really mm -hmm. bad eyesight? Uh, no? Bat? You mean a bat? bat? Yeah, do, do uh, yeah. bats have uh, bad eyesight? <laughs> I think so. Maybe uh, as for my as my comprehension of this article, they they have eyesight, but they are not blind. But their eyesight as blind as that, right? No. No. Okay. Oh so there's, so there's nothing wrong with their eyesight. There's nothing wrong. Like they can uh, see fine. Near, a little nearsighted. No, it says they're even, it says ah. they're not even a little oh. nearsighted. So their their eyesight is good. They oh can. Gosh. Yeah, but the expression is based on, it says, um, at, in the second paragraph, it explains that um, it's based on uh, the fact that a lot of people are afraid of bats, so they create these myths about them that maybe aren't true. And and they are the nocturnal animals, so mm -hmm, they are fly in the, in the dark darkness, so people misunderstood about them. Yeah, probably. Uh, Mm -hmm. I yeah, but um, but it's true what Ahmed was saying that they use echolocation, so that also helps them to orient themselves in mm. their in their surroundings and to to find mm. food. Yeah, so um, but still the expression in English it just means that you have really bad eyesight if somebody says that you're blind as a bat. Um, so Akko, would you like to try maybe to give an example of maybe how you could use that in a sentence? Mm -hmm. And uh, the eyesight of bat is not uh, is not as blind as bat. Actually, <laughs> they have a kind of <laughs> yeah uh, normal uh, eyesight. Okay, nice uh, job. <laughs> Very good. So you could say the bat is not as blind as bat. They have good eyesight. <laughs> Nice job. Very good. Okay, so I want you guys to try to remember this idiom: blind is bat. And we're going to move on to, we can click the next button um, on the top where it says number 10. You can click the button that says next, and that will open number 9. And so, um, I think Akko read the last one. So, Fernando, would you like to read number 9 for us? Yeah. <coughs> Cute as a bat here. 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 Mm -hmm. Many people would agree that bats in general are not cute. Lots of folks, in fact, find the girls uh, whether we're talking about fillies, cockroaches, or ants. And we know bat is not a scientific term for an insect, but we're dealing with as as my hair here. Simile. A simile. A simile here. A suku shot a clearly brightest, half cute ears. Highlight, uh, high, highlight and legally, but more to the point, but non generally have earned. And at least not the kind of earth we think about. Those are two appendages of either seat up on, to, up on the hip, head. Glass shoppers ha have earned, earned uh, on the abdomen, for this, for example. Well, Katy did sport. Katy did. did sport then on the front ledge. Lane swings. Their 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 ears are in on their wings. Mm -hmm. Short, University Colorado, Boulder. Uh, so where did uh, saying come from? Possibly from the word acute, meaning shadow of the meaning shadow of the king. Uh, but have a, a, a acute hearing. He can detect pains, pains, sounds. Plus, those are head pi pitched. In pitched. High pitched. <laughs> in 18th century England, cute was another for a, for word of acute. Uh, perhaps uh, people back then described insect hearing or earth as acute, meaning they are really good at the job and not adorable. <laughs> Very so. nice. Great job. Good reading. Um, and Fernando, did you have questions about the definitions of any of the words that you read here? Mm, yes. Uh, for example, uh, 
glass show shoppers. I don't know uh, what the, the meaning. A grasshopper is in. Um, if you if you go up and look at the picture, this is a grasshopper. Okay. Yeah. They're usually small, and they live in the grass and they they jump. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I I know. Okay. okay. It looks really big in the picture, but I think it's just zoomed in. <laughs> okay, um, I wanted to welcome um, Michael to class. We have two Michaels today. Hey, Michael. Hello. Okay. Hi. How are you? Very well, thank you. What about you? I'm doing well, thanks. Where are you from? Spain. Oh, cool. What part of Spain? Valencia. Oh, nice. We have another student, Fernando. He's from Madrid. Uh, well, Madrid. Um, <laughs> a little town, but uh, now I'm living in Madrid. There's a, a, a lot of people from Spain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think so. They must be making a lot of advertisements mm -hmm. um, yeah. in Spain, <laughs> verbally. <laughs> okay, so Michael from Chicago, I'm going to start calling you Mike, okay? And then Michael from Spain, I'll just call you Michael. That's good. That Do you have other um, like uh, diminutives for Michael in English? No, just Mike. Is that correct? Diminutive or? Uh -huh. Diminutive. Wow, I guess the word. Okay. Good job. Yeah, that's an awesome vocabulary word. Great job. Miguel in Spain, Miguel, Miguel Ángel. Oh, do you, do you want me to call you Miguel? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> okay. I'll write it you here. You can still call me Mike. Okay, I'll try. Or Matthew, try. if you like. My or Matthew. Matthew. How many names yeah. do you have? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, no problem. Um, all right, Miguel, it's nice to meet you. I'm happy that you're with us in class. So, Miguel, I'm going to um, put a link here. Uh, we're using the Google Chat because some of the students had problems opening the Verbling Chat. So if you could please open the Google Chat. You will see a link. Oh, actually, I'll give you another link. <laughs> that was the last page, so we're on this page now. I, I have opened the link. Okay, great. Okay, so um, right now we are reading, um, we read number nine, and so we're practicing using all of these different idioms um, in sentences, and we're learning um, if they're scientifically accurate, the idioms, if they're really true. So, um, Fernando did an excellent job reading. Thank you so much, Fernando. So, um, maybe, hey, maybe I can ask Mike um, to tell us, um, do bugs really have ears? No, as is like said in the, uh, <laughs> no, as is written in this article, in this uh, short article, that they don't have any ears, they don't have uh, um, nothing, but they have uh, very acute hearing. Mm -hmm. And and they have something that's like an ear, but it doesn't look like like our ears. And so um, so they're not located like on their head, like we have our ears on our head. So where are um, grasshoppers? Where did they have their ears? On their wings, according to University of Colorado. Okay, yeah. Well, well, the lacewing and uh, the lacewing insect, they have their their ears on their wings. Um, but it says grasshoppers have their ears in another place. Oh, on the abdomens. Yes, so that would be really weird. Like next to your belly button, you could have your ear. <laughs> yep. Well, for them, it's not weird. I think for grasshopper. Yeah, for them, it's normal. It's, and um, and this other bug, a Katie did. They have them on their legs, on their front legs. So it's really interesting. So um, the expression, though, "cute as a bug's ear," just um, just means really cute. Something that's really cute. And so it comes from acute hearing, like in old English, acute uh, uh, meant uh, uh, acute, like the same meaning in old English. Yeah, very good, nice, you have good reading comprehension, very nice, good explanation. So Fernando, I wanted to ask you, could you maybe use this expression, cute as a bug's ear, in a sentence? It just means something that's like really cute. Okay, okay. Uh, for example, um, 
Córdoba is a city of Spain, a Spain city. It's cute as a bat's ears, for example. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's a good example. Nice. So anything that you find to be really cute or really adorable, then you would call it cute as a bug's ear. And okay. so a lot of times um, it'll be something small, like you could say it about a child. You could say, oh, she's as cute as a bug's ear. Oh, okay, or maybe okay. like a little puppy or a kitten or something like small and cute. Okay, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, but it, it could even be for like for a... Um, like a village, like you were saying, Cordova. Maybe if it's like a quaint village, you could say it's really cute too. Okay, so let's move on. Let's go to number eight. Um, it's Mike's turn from Chicago. <laughs> Mike, could you read number eight for us? Okay. One second. Number eight. So uh, it's uh, it's like a bird. It's mm -hmm. like a bird. A picnic, uh if you really eat like a bird, you are consuming at least a quarter to half your body weight every day. A picky eater or someone who nibbles, mm -hmm, nibbles. Uh, modest amounts of food at a meal is often said to eat like a bird. In other words, the person doesn't eat too much. Uh, eat much. Oh, oh, how false! False. How do you mm -hmm. do this? False. Uh -huh. The opposite False. of true. False. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, birds actually consume a wide array array? Mm -hmm. array array of insects, nectar, and other goodies. Mm -hmm. Noshing? Noshing? Noshing. Mm -hmm. Frequently throughout the day. It may seem like they are not eating much because they eat a small amount of time. But they are. Some insect eating songbirds chow down every two seconds. A study by Smithsonian, Smithsonian, how do you read? Smithsonian. Smithsonian. Researchers showed that birds, along with lizards and bats, eat so many insects they indirectly benefit plants and help them grow. The amount a bird eats depends on its size. Larger ones may eat a quarter of their body weight each day, while smaller ones up to half. Uh, and then there is the petite, 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 petite hummingbird, which famously famously consumes twice its weight every day in order to maintain its frenetic wing flapping. Very nice, great job. So um, there's like one more sentence, but it's in blue. I'm not sure why it's in blue. Most okay. Oh, when because they when it comes down to it. yeah, I think they accidentally linked it to yeah because they should only <laughs> till most. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when it comes down to it. I can Someone of eating like a bird really means they are a bit of a pig. Assuming pigs really eat a lot. Excellent reading. Nice job. So they use this word again, nosh, in this in this um, first paragraph. Do you remember the definition of that word, nosh? Mm, are you asking me? Yep. You put me on the spot. No, I don't yeah. remember. I was it's thinking okay. about something else. No, it's okay. No problem. It's in uh, the third sentence, I think. It says, birds actually consume a wide ver a wide array of insects, nectar, and other goodies, noshing frequently throughout the day. Like eating. Yeah, exactly. Very good. Yeah. If, so uh, um, it's nice that they're, that they're repeating the use of this um, this vocabulary word since you guys are unfamiliar with it. So we can try to remember with the repetition. But is it nice common job. word to use in, uh, using, used in English? What? No. Is it a uh, common used word? Um, uh, kind of. Not... Super common. No, it's not super common. You no, know, I learned like English like for one year and a half, so I never heard this word. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it depends. Like some people have words like this that aren't super common, but it depends on the person. Like some people will use a word like this all the time. 
And so for them, it's really common. But um, for other people, maybe it wouldn't be very common. But I guess the person who wrote this article really likes this word <laughs> because they used it at various times. What about chow down? Have you guys heard of chow down before? Like to chow. To chow. <laughs> so this also means to eat, to chow yep. down. Yeah. Um, so Ahmed. Yeah. Hello. I'm going to ask you to use this um, this expression in a sentence, to eat like a bird. It means just to eat like a tiny, tiny bit. Yeah. Uh, when, uh, if I want a child who he didn't eat too much, I say to him, you eat, you eating like a bird. <laughs> Very good. Perfect example. Great job. But what about like in reality? Do birds really eat like a tiny bit or do they eat a lot? They, they eat a lot. <laughs> yeah. In reality, yeah, they eat a lot. Sometimes yeah, I thought eat... this was really interesting. Go ahead. Double their weight, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, so it says even the hummingbird. How much does a hummingbird eat? Yeah, it eats uh, the weight of uh, his, war, uh, his, uh, his weight, yeah. Yeah, very good. So if a person weighs like 150 pounds, they would have to eat 300 pounds of food every day. Uh, I... To be like a hummingbird. So actually, birds eat like a ton of food, a ton. Um, so this this expression is also scientifically inaccurate to eat like a bird. <laughs> All right, let's go on. Let's try number seven. Um, I think it's Ahmed's turn to read. So you guys can click over to number seven. Yeah. Uh, heavy as a car. As a clam. Mm -hmm. As a clam? Clam. Yeah. Yep, as a clam. Yeah. <laughs> What's the meaning of clam? <laughs> a clam is like, like you can see an, kind of an ugly foot in this picture, and then beside the ugly foot, there's a clam. <laughs> yeah. So I'm saying in the beach? Yeah, it's a little animal that lives inside of a shell. Yeah. Uh, the saying heavy as a clam uh, cropped up in America during the early 19th century, especially in the, nor the, north the northeastern states. Uh, clams don't have a smile smiling faces. Smiley uh, is derived from the longer expression heavy as a clam at high tide. Then they didn't grow up pushing inside. Here is what it means. Clams are Bivalves. Bivalves. Uh, bivalves. Uh, inver invertebrates sporting uh, a shell dividing into two separate sections. Uh, they also have a strong foot uh, that burrows into sand. People head out to go climbing at low tide when it's much easier to find the bird. Bivalves. 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 Thus, clams are supposedly happy when it's high tide, and they don't have to worry about people trying to burn them out of the sand and turn them into in trees. Yeah. Entrees. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> entree, it's another word for like a dish of food, an entree. Very um, good. Nice reading. Good job. Um, were there some words that you didn't understand here? Uh, yeah, it seems like uh, I understand all the words. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Um, so, Aka, I was going to ask you uh, where did this expression, mm -hmm. happy as a clam, come from? Mm, maybe kind of uh, they they uh where uh, where uh, the America nineteenth century yes. America yes. yes okay so how did it originate? Uh, kind of uh, what is vivals? Clams are vivals. 
Bivalves, uh huh. They're invertebrates. Um, so a bivalve is an animal that um, that has that lives in between two shells. Mm -hmm. So like an oyster or a clam. All of the little animals that they're like this. <laughs> yeah, they're called bivalves. They're invertebrates, mm -hmm. living inside of a shell. Mm -hmm. So. In the okay, high, um, people hear that go climbing at low tide, uh, so it's they easier to find the the bullied bivalves mm -hmm. uh, as their ingredient as their ingredient. So or uh, the clams, uh, suppose they're happy when it's high tide. Mm -hmm. Very good, nice. So people like to eat clams, mm -hmm. and so um, so it's easier for the clams to hide when it is high tide, when there's mm -hmm. when the water is higher. Yeah. But when it's low tide, people can find them easier. Mm. Um, so let's try to use that expression "happy as a clam" in a sentence. Do you want to try, Aka? Yeah. Uh, when someone's really if happy. Found, if I find a, a clam in, at the beach, I. I uh, when I found a clam at the beach, uh, I was happy as a, uh, as a clam. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very good. Or you could say, like, if you are going to see some children and you have some cupcakes, you could say, I saw my nephew and I gave him a cupcake and he was happy as a clam. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on. Let's try number six. Um, Aka, it's your turn to read. Okay. Okay. Yeah, crazy as a loon. Ah, the poor loon. Its name uh, is linked with being crazy, insane, <laughs> a lunatic. In reality, it's anything but not. Loons are west of water birds, driving for their meals in spacious lakes and using the water as a runaway to take flight. Uh, there are five loons uh, species in the world, species in the world, with the common loon the most widespread in North America. Common loons are actually pretty cool. They are strikingly attired in summer, sporting uh, ebony, uh, ebony head and uh, body, uh, covered with an attack, uh, attractive uh, black and white pattern. In winter. They change to a plain uh, dark gray and white. Despite rather stark bodies, they can jip through the, the air at incredible speed. Uh, migrant loons have uh, topped 70 miles, 113 kilometer per hour. But perhaps their most uh, impressive traits are uh, their driving and fishing skills. Ah, sorry, uh, diving and Diving, fishing. yeah. <laughs> it would be funny to see a loon <laughs> driving. They <laughs> <laughs> uh, submerge without splash, uh, without a splash, and uh, to to uh, torpedo through the water to catch their prey, gracefully incorporating about 180, uh, 180 degree uh, turns as needed. So why the crazy tag? Common roots have several types of calls, including whales, yodels, and uh, tremolos. Mm -hmm. uh, and tremolos and yodels, in particular, sound a bit like uh, maniac laughter. Maniacal. The, uh, maniacal, maniacal, <laughs> maniacal laughter. Uh, while they are uh, signature, signature? E eerie. Well, sounds hauntingly insane. Nice job, very good. I know that word is hard. Maniacal, maniacal. Maniacal. That means maybe maniac or something. Yeah, something that a maniac would do would be maniacal. So, like maniacal laughter would be like the laughter of like a crazy person. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nice job, excellent reading, Aka. So, Fernando, I'm gonna ask you some questions about this. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we're talking here about the loons. So, um, why why did loons get this um, reputation of being crazy? Because his sounds is too similar to the 
crazy or hysterical loud, louder. Uh -huh, laughter? Yeah, very good. Nice job. Um, so they're also like a little bit creepy when you look at them. They have like these red eyes. They're creepy, these birds. Um, it, it describes their heads as being ebony. Do you guys know what that means? Uh, no. Okay, it's it's a synonym for black. So if you hear something being um, described as ebony, that means that it is black. So Fernando, maybe uh, you can use this expression crazy as a loon in a sentence. Uh, okay, uh, then... I don't know. My... The man who, who, the man of Chicago uh, is of the funambulic, funambulic of to funambulic of Chicago, maybe. What? Okay, what? try to say it one more time. Yes, that way for in um, I don't know. <laughs> no, go ahead. Yeah, you're you're doing good. I just couldn't hear you. Uh, the man, of, the Chicago man, is crazy, crazy as a loon. Okay, yeah, very good. So anybody that's like a little bit nuts, a little bit insane, you would, you could call them crazy as a loon. Nice job, Fernando. Thank you for your example. Good work. <laughs> okay, so Fernando, it's gonna be your turn to read uh, next. I, I, so just, we can... uh, oh. want, I just asked a question about ebony and ivory. It means. Uh, white part of the piano and kind of black part of the piano. I, I it could. Right. Um, I That's think it's it's another way of saying black and white. Yeah, because of the Paul McCartney hit song, Ebony and I. Oh, I think it was talking about people, actually, like black and white people together. Yeah, so the Stevie Wonder and Paul McCartney do it just with that song in that song. Okay. okay. I don't know if I've actually heard it, but <laughs> I've heard of it. Um, so I knew what you were talking about when you wrote it. <laughs> I couldn't find that. But yeah, I think it's talking I, about I black and white people. Okay. Okay. Because okay. like in the 60s in the United States, um, there was like a lot of racism mm -hmm. and uh, segregation. And that's when people started to be um, integrated again. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there, that was like a very popular topic. Um, okay, so let's go to number five, and it's Fernando's turn to read about the crocodile. <laughs> cry, cry, crying crocodile tears. If someone, if someone says you are crying, crying, crying crocodile tears, tears, uh, they don't mean you are sad. They, they mean that you're fake, fucking, it, faking. Okay. Faking it. Faking. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> no, I know. Okay. So, you are crying, pretending to cry, when you are really not sad at all. In fact, you are maybe quite gleeful. This saying arose out mm -hmm. of the belief that crocodiles cro cry at their devour they pray. Since uh, science Crowds enjoyed their meals. They would de de therefore be thinking sadness about taking another creature's, creature's life. Quickly, so she, so she turns, turns uh, as do alligators, meaning they have a lacrimal gland that produ produces tears, which lubricate their eyes. And yes, this did do some time she. Uh, these trees will date it. Uh, re research at the University of Florida believe that animals get so excited when they are chewing down that they that air gets blown out. Blown. Uh, so their sinus and four teeth back. Sinuses, mm -hmm. sinuses and four teeth back back up uh, into the eye. Uh, yet while there no sadness behind behind their tears, there's no emotion, fake, fake, or otherwise behind their behind them either. The tears have merely a psychological response 
like swing, swinging when you are nervous. Very good. Nice. Great reading. I know there were a lot of hard words there. Um, that one um, in the last sentence is physiological. Physiological. Yeah, that one's, I know it's hard to say. Um, but yeah, you did awesome with your reading. Very good job. There were a lot of long words there. Um, so, Mike, maybe you can tell us, um, like, how do, um, is this really true? Like, are crocodiles, like, faking it when they're crying? No. They're trying to manipulate us? <laughs> Now, as is written in this article, it's implying that uh, they, uh, uh, when the eyes, uh, so there is some. Oh my God! How how? Uh, which look explain. at their eyes? Yes. Yeah. Uh, their lacrimal glands produce tears, which lubricate their eyes. Mhm. Mm uh, very good. So, um, so is are they crying because they're sad? No, it's is written that uh, while they eat, uh, mm -hmm. what's shed? Shed, um, like when you shed a tear, that means like um, a tear comes out of your eye. You shed a tear. Oh, okay. Or like mm. they say that snakes shed their skin, so they, um, like their skin comes off. Okay. Yeah. So while they're eating, uh, they shed. Mm -hmm. They shed tears. Very good. So um, this expression, though, crying crocodile tears, it um, it means that like if a child is starts crying because they want something in the store, they they want to manipulate their parents into buying them a new toy, and they start crying, <laughs> but they're not really sad. They're just trying to get what they want. That's when they would use this expression, crying crocodile tears. So, um, so Mike, can you think of a way that you could use that maybe in a sentence? Uh, okay. So, can you give me an example and after that I'll give you an example. Give you an example. Okay, yeah. Um, maybe you could say um, to, like, your daughter, you could say, stop crying crocodile tears. I know <laughs> you're not really sad. <laughs> I know you're just trying to get the new... Barbie doll or something. I would not like to have a parent like you. <laughs> <laughs> you said it was so so angrily said. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I would say as well, like uh, to to some uh, to some person, like that implies he is faking his tears. I say, stop crying with crocodile tears. Okay, uh, great. Yeah, very good. Perfect. Nice yep. time. It looks like you have a good comprehension of that idiom. Good job. <laughs> okay, um, so I think next it's Ahmed's turn. So maybe Ahmed, you could read number four for us. Oh, this one's cute. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, <coughs> the reason is a more a more obscure expression. The reason is means something is excellent. Magnificent, top shelf, but do bees have knees? And if so, are they great? Like all insects, bees having six sections to their legs. Each segment connects to the next by a joint. One of the sec sections could be considered more knee-like than the others. But in reality, bees don't have knees in the way we think of them. Some was it that since bees have sacs on the back of their leg segments to carry pollen, the bees mm -hmm. pollen, pollen. The business was a, a reference to the fact that pollen was a good or excellent thing. However, when the forest became popular in 1920s. America, there were other similarly silly animal expressions being banded about like the cat's pajamas and the sardine's whiskers. The forest like followed the simile as a sign of the time and it, it, and it couldn't hurt that bees and knees uh, rhymed. Rhymed. Mm -hmm. Rhymed. 
uh, making it fun to utter. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. So when two words sound like the same, like this, bees and knees, um, they say that it rhymes. Like red and head and bed, they rhyme. Okay. So Aka, Aka, I'm gonna ask you to try to use that expression, mm -hmm. the bees knees, in a sentence. Bees knees. Uh, yeah. Uh, kind of. Oh, this class is bees knees. <laughs> this class is the bees. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good job. Yeah. So when you really like something, you can say it's the bees knees. And as it explained in the the end of the second paragraph, this was more popular. It's kind of an old-fashioned expression. It was popular in the 1920s in the United States, but still it's like fun to say. It's a cute expression to use. So we are kind of running out of time, so let's hurry up and read the next one. Aka, it's your turn to try number three. Okay, next one. Okay, uh, stubborn as a mule. Mm -hmm. When you hear this phrase, a picture probably pops into your mind. Someone trying to drag a mule forward by a rope while the mule resists, digging its uh, hooves. Uh, into the dart and refusing to budge, or maybe you are picturing a donkey. <clears throat> if so, are uh, both animals stubborn? For starters, uh, let's discuss their differences. A mule is not an animal species, like a horse or a donkey. It's a hybrid of or the product of two other species. In this case, the pairing of uh, a male donkey with a female a, don a female horse. A donkey has 62 uh, cr chromosomes and horses have 64. Mules are born with 63. These odd numbers of chromosomes uh, mean they can't reproduce. Donkeys and mules both have a reputation uh, uh, reputation as, as, an as animals with Mm, uh, Moorish personality. They are widely seen as stubborn, willful, obstinate, obstinate. Even guess what? They aren't a uh, study uh, done by a uh, Canterbury Christ Church University and uh, the even the donkey uh, sanctuary sanctuary showed that when it came to showing flexibility toward Solving problem, uh, learning to uh, learn. Mules came out to top, followed by donkeys, with horses and dogs bringing up uh, the rear. So why the common uh, uh, mis, uh, misperception? Misperceptions. Mules and donkeys are smart, really smart. They also have a deep seated tendency towards self. Uh, uh, preservation, mm -hmm. so they won't let owners overwork them, nor will they typically uh, put themselves in danger. Uh, the, this characteristic led to the stubborn level. Good job, very nice, great work. Okay, so Fernando, maybe you can use this expression stubborn as a mule in a sentence. Uh. My mother is as stubborn as a mule. <laughs> what? You can't say that. What if she sees this class in the future one day? Because she's, she's very hard with me. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, that's a good example. Like anybody that um, is unwilling to change um, would be considered stubborn as a mule. Um, so you have a good comprehension of the idiom there. But um, Mike, I wanted to ask you, are, are mules and donkeys really stubborn or no? Oh, from how you asked, I uh, think uh, they're not really stubborn. I mean, the way you asked the question, your question, I think not really stubborn. But to be honest, I didn't pay attention to the text. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> So I know the expression well, stubborn as a mule, as a mm -hmm. mule, because in my language I think we have the same, uh, the, the same idea. 
Okay. Well, um, they did a study on, on different kinds of animals, and it says that mules and donkeys, um, that they're really smart, but they, um, that they're, they're willing to be flexible and they're willing to work with their owners to learn a new, a new way to do things. So, um, you guys did an excellent job so far with all of these different idioms. There are two more. Cats have nine lives and you can't teach an old dog new tricks. So I want you guys to try to practice those because we already ran out of time. Um, but also don't forget the ones that we read through. Blind as a bat, cute as a bug's ear, eats like a bird, happy as a clam, cry crocodile tears, the bee's knees, and stubborn as a mule. <laughs> so Are you reading to... them? What? Are you reading them? Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you know them at the top of your head? Because I don't have them memorized. <laughs> okay. okay, well, it was really nice to see you guys. I hope everyone has a really nice afternoon at, or yeah. a night. And I'll see you guys soon, okay? Thanks Bye. for coming. Thank Bye, guys. Thanks Bye. for coming. Bye. See you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.